So I'm going to tie the wicket. Uh, I originally tied it as a stonefly pattern, but it turned out to be a superb uh, caddis pattern as well. So it's a pretty small fly. I'm going to use a RX size 18, 507. The hook's cold, and I'm going to use a Petrochon thread. It's splittable. You, you're going to need a splittable thread to do this one. So you'll need that. And uh, the first material I'm going to put to this fly, except for the thread and the hook, is a uh, polished quill, natural pico quill, like that. So, but we're going to start with the thread. And uh, re remember one thing when you do this one uh, every wrap has to mean something. Don't do an extra wrap here or an extra wrap there because it's it's going to be too much. Just, just be careful with the wraps. Every, every wrap has, has got to have a meaning. So I'm going to start my thread about a millimeter, a millimeter and a half behind the hook eye. Like so. And I'll wrap it down halfway on the shank and I'm going to turn back just to create a little bit of a tapering here. And I'm going to turn back again. And I'm going to take that excess away like so. And I'm going to continue up the thread back to the end of the hook shank like that. So I usually put this little quill in my mouth while I do that. I didn't do it now, but it, it makes it a little bit softer. It's pretty easy that those can break. So that makes it easier. Now I'm going to put put the quill on facing like that, the broad end towards from the fly on the back. And there's always a black line on that quill. Be sure to keep that one on top. And the segmentation when you wrap this one is, is going to look much better. So I'm going to tie that in like so. On the side, I prefer to do it on the side like that. And I'm going to take that quill away. So uh, and I'll continue to just wrap the thread forward uh, to where we started the thread. Okay, and now I'm going to use my fingers on this little one. So I'm going to hide this one, unfortunately, like that for you. But I'm going to let go of it so you can see what's happening here. Well, when I wrap the quill, I just to try to prevent it to, from uh, from break breaking. Like so, so. And we're getting close to the where the thread is here, so we're going to tie this one in. Like so. So as you can see, there's a there's a pretty good segmentation when you use. The black side on the top looks good. Uh, I'm gonna take that one off. Just tie this down to two short wraps, and I'm gonna tie this off actually here. And uh, it like that. Just one turn. There we go. Uh, now the next point here is to I usually. I'm going to glue this one, or I usually, usually use uh, super glue. So I actually, I'm going to take this one away because I prepared, prepared one because it takes a couple of minutes to dry. As you can see, I do the same thing on this one. So I'm going to change to that one to save some time, like so. Okay. So now when the glue is dry, we're going to apply the thread again. Approximately about the same place as the last time. Now, important time the wicket is be sure you have the room between the thread and the hook eye all the time. If you lose that room and get too close to the hook eye, you're not going to be able to finish the fly properly. So be careful with that one. So you can, as you can see, I either rather go with my thread a little bit backwards from where I started. I'm going to need that room. Okay. Uh, we're going to use a C to C feather as an underwing. 
like that. To tighten this one down a little bit, I usually wet my fingers and do like that. I'm going to place this on top of the fly, pull a little bit back, and I'm going to just two loose wraps on that one, as you can see. That means I'm still going to be able to pull it forward while holding it with my left hand. I'm pulling it slowly forward through the wraps until the CDC feather, the fibers are approximately as long as the as a hook, if you look at look at that band. When I'm satisfied with that one, as I am now, I'm gonna make a tighter wrap or two. Cut this one off, like so. I just make one more. Then I'll, with two or three wraps, I'm gonna go back to where I started, like that. So, next material is It's uh, deer hair. I'm using this one is the color done. It's a short fine, so it's a little bit shorter than normal deer hair. If you use uh, normal, it, it's going to get a lot of a lot of hair for a small fly. But a small clump like that don't have to be big. Uh, and I'm going to stack this one. See what it looks like, like so. Take that one. I usually go tie or tie. I'm gonna cut the ends off from this one and I'm gonna measure it. I want this to be well, just, an, just a hint longer than the C to C feather here, about a millimeter or two millimeters. And I'm gonna take some of the fibers out here. I don't want it to be too much. I'm measuring it all the time like that. Maybe a few more. It's not going to be a streaking cabbage, you know, so it's not going to be too much hair. I want this one to sit low on the water. Uh, all the deer hair, I want that to be on top of the fly. That looks good. So I measure that one with my thumb and my finger about where the thread is hanging down at about two millimeters. So I got that. So I'm going to change hands here. I'm going to take a little bit of this off, like that. Okay. And I'm going to put my hand down here, keeping a very firm grip with my left hand, wrapping two soft ones, soft wraps. I'm going to tighten that a little bit. And I want again like four wraps. Then I'm gonna to try to get in here and I'm gonna cut off the excess of the deer hair. Very gentle so I don't move the deer hair around too much. Like so, I'm gonna try to wrap the thread a few wraps between all the fibers here, and I'm back. It's gonna be looking like that. And you can have a look around this one and see if there are, if there's any fibers pointing down or being in the way here. Just cut them off. It does. It won't matter at the end. Like that. Okay. So there's one thing left here. I'm going to use some opossum dubbing. We're going to use it to wrap this one. It's a thorax kind of, and it's a possum that got long fibers, so it's gonna act uh, also as a couple of legs or, or a few legs down there. So I'm just making that one look something like that. Put it down. Now I'm gonna split this thread. So 
I'm using my new layer. Like so. I put my thing in between and I'm just gonna put this on the pass I mean, I almost dropped my glasses there. Like so. I'm gonna very slowly spin this one a little bit. And if there's too much out there, you can always take it away. So it's gonna look like that. Now I'm gonna try or I'm gonna wrap this one while gently stroking the opossum back a little bit. Like so. And the next thing is to tie it off actually. So I'm just So, and there you go. That's a wicked go fish.